Okay, so Kenya and I are going to a movie and we're gonna eat. We have chosen to eat at a place called Max. It's something that our dear subscriber and friend, Trish Tyree, recommended. I was eating some nachos. Let me make sure I ain't in my teeth. Hold on. Mom, always, always got something in my teeth. We are going to get the car washed. Between the sun, this hat, and all these shadows. I think you can see the shadow of my hand. Can you see it? It's like right here. Um, we're hanging out tonight. Just got the car wash and filled up the tank. And we are going to take you along with us. So happy that you're here again. Hope you're doing okay. by CVS really quickly to pick up a prescription before we go. There's a really cool testimony attached to it that I'll tell you about a little bit later, so make sure you watch. Okay, they just need just a little plastic, so I'm gonna sign your name. Okay, so you're Thank you. you too. Earlier, we were at the pharmacy picking up some drops for my eyes, and the drops are called Latanoprost. My ophthalmologist subscribed them. Subscribed. <laughs> I must be thinking about subscribe if you haven't. That's a message. Um, he prescribed them for me. So here's what happened last year. I didn't publicly share it um, until maybe. I want to say January, I was at a ministry engagement in North Carolina and I shared with the congregation. And then other than that, only my close friends knew. Last year, I had started having some problems with my vision and I needed glasses, so I went ahead and got glasses. But when I went to see the ophthalmologist, um, I learned that something a little more serious was going on. So I was diagnosed with uh, guacamole. <laughs> gotta get it together. Kai is over here trying to justify it. She said, well, mom, you said nachos. Maybe you were just thinking about nachos and guacamole. Anyway, I was diagnosed with glaucoma and I didn't learn until later. My ophthalmologist said, find out if somebody else in your family has it. My dad has struggled with guac... I was about to say guacamole again. Glaucoma. And so I had to ask him about it and he told me about that condition and I had uh, extremely high interocular pressure. So my eye pressure was way up combined with the guacamole. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to I'm going to tell you this testimony after I have eaten. I think I'm hungry. <laughs> Devil, get out my toe. 
song. <laughs> okay, so our two sons, Kadar and Caleb, said I need to try and testify again. Don't let the devil steal my testimony. All right. So I was diagnosed with glaucoma and very high intraocular eye pressure. It had gotten so bad that some of my eyesight had already deteriorated. And the doctor told me that he didn't know when I would go blind, but by five years, I would definitely lose my vision. <clears throat> he told me there was nothing I could do. They wanted to operate on my eyes anyway, just to get my pressure down. But they prepared me that within five years, I wouldn't be able to see. That's how bad it had gotten. And because glaucoma often doesn't have any real symptoms, many people go undiagnosed and there's so much damage done to the eyes. That was what happened in my case. <clears throat> and when I received this news, as you can imagine, it was devastating to me. And I was like, Lord, I need my eyes. And I remember sitting in the car, I called a friend and I had on these big glasses because I couldn't they had done all this test and put all this stuff in my eyes I couldn't stand sunlight <clears throat> I didn't know I wasn't going to be able to drive myself home so I had to wait for Kenya to come pick me up so I'm sitting out in the parking lot at this clinic crying and I wish I could have told you that in that moment I just gathered myself I just collected myself I didn't it was just so devastating to me so I called up uh, her name is Cassandra in North Carolina. I talked to her about what was going on. And she has been through her own battles with cancer, with kidney disease, just a prayer warrior. And when she was going through her ordeal, God sent me to her and we prayed together. I interceded, the Lord moved. She's cancer free and God is faithful. But anyway, when I talked to her, instead of speaking to this sad, devastated Deanna, she began talking to the Lord. And she said, you know, God, Deanna has served you faithfully. You know she needs her eyes. She began to decree and declare things over my life. See, when you're going through a hard season, you need somebody who knows how to get a prayer through, who can speak to your spirit, who can bombard heaven on your behalf. And that's just what she did. And I remember her saying, God, I'm not praying that you would heal her eyes, but that you would give her new eyes. And I remember she prayed and prayed and I felt a, a bit of a release. And so I, I was being treated. I didn't want them to operate on my eyes. And I was praying and believing God and just living with this reality that the doctor gave me that I was going to be blind in five years, ministering across the nation, encouraging other folks and just knowing what was going on with me. And I remember feeling like, God, why is this happening? And you know how sometimes when we go through stuff, we, we start thinking, did I do something wrong? God, are you punishing me? Did, did, did I miss something along the way? It makes me think about in, I believe it was St. John 9, when that man was born blind and the disciples began to ask Jesus, who sinned? Was it him? Was his parents? Somebody had to do something wrong. But Jesus told them nobody had sinned. There was nothing that was wrong, but it was just so God could get the glory. Well, I went to my treatments. I did everything that they said. I put my eye drops in, went back. And I remember my ophthalmologist pulling my charts and, and still pushing for surgery. And he sat me down and he put me under this big machine. He was looking in my eyes. It could magnify my eyes. I don't know how many times, but he looked and I remember him looking and he asked me, could you lean in a little closer? And he looked again and I'll try and make this the story more brief, but he looked this time a really long time. And I remember him re-examining my charts and thumbing through. And he asked me again if I would just kind of lean in and hold my head still. And he stared into my eyes. And by the time it was finished, he looked at me. Not only was the pressure in my eyes normal, it was like below even the average. It was so normal. It was incredible. But not only that, he told me, I know I gave you some drops, but it's impossible for drops to do what I see happening in your eyes. He said, it doesn't just look better. It's almost as if you have new eyes. Let me tell you what. I could have got up out that chair, ran around that clinic and shouted glory to God. But I didn't behave like that. Although I did thank the Lord and he knew that day who did it for me. 
I let him know that it was the Lord, but God healed me. And that prognosis changed that I was going to lose my vision in five years. All that went out the window. And I just know that I didn't go through that just for me, but it's for God to get the glory. And I felt led to share it today. As you saw my husband and I going, because they still have me on those eye drops and I still obey their orders, but I know it's not the eye drops. It's not the doctor's expert opinion. Here's another cool thing. I wanted a second opinion, see, when he said that to me. But he told me there was only a, a core group in Western New York where I live that even specialized in what he specializes in. He told me there were only three doctors and he was the top one who trained the other one. So I was talking to the head guy. He had the highest opinion in the region, but there was one with an opinion that was higher. God has the final say and he said not so. And so if you're watching this right now, I just want to encourage you. I don't care what the doctor said. I don't care what your finances say I don't care what your health says or your situation says God has the final say and if he says that you are healed and if he's spoken a word over your life it will come to pass I am a living testimony and I know it is all for his glory just as your situation is and sometimes we get attacked I need my eyes for my ministry sometimes you get attacked at your point of need you need your money to do what God has called you to do you need your health you need your emotions to be together you need your mind you need your peace you need your joy and all the things that you need. The enemy loves to attack you in those areas. But God, he sent me, I believe he did, to let you know that even though you're being attacked in your area of need, God is going to deliver you and he's going to get glory out of your story. Okay, so I think there's going to be a change of plans. It is currently 8.35. Our movie begins at 10. And it is crowded in Max. We didn't do our scheduling very well tonight. So we're going to have to switch up our plans and try and grab something to eat that we can get really quickly so we won't be late for our movie. We'll have to try Max at another time, Trish. I really wanted to try it today. Especially wanting to try a good veggie burger but we'll see what our options are we're just going to do what's quick and then we can enjoy our show okay so chipotle ended up being plan b and i got the sofrito I think that's what you call it. I put some um, tofu, corn, guacamole, peppers in it, and brown rice. And they convinced me to try the chips. There went my healthy choice. And I already had some nachos, but I'm very excited to try it. The guacamole though is amazing. What'd you get? I got the chicken bowl with black beans, onions and peppers, white corn, um, and that's it. Here's the first taste. Oh yeah, there's tofu in here too. This is so delicious, I can't even. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna have vegan next time. Deanna stuff was better than mine, and I had chicken in it. I'm going straight vegan. You heard it here first, folks. I like Chipotle. Have to try this again. That's mm. a miracle, cause you know Kenya don't like nothing. Say it. <laughs> Off to the movies! Yay! I don't walk. I didn't walk out the house and forgot my 
my lip gloss and I got everything in here except my little neutral color lip gloss that I like. I got all of these ugh, colors. So I'm gonna have to put on some red or something. I got this stuff left in my this bag because <clears throat> when Kaya had to do her photos and the girls and I kept extra gloss with me but I forgot to bring my neutral out. Boo! Red it is. Feeling good. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Got to fight off the itis. <laughs> right. I don't think neither one of us gonna be sleeping. You know what we going to see? <laughs> Some nonsense. <laughs> I do not like scary movies. And she wanna go see a scary movie. You know what we going to see? The Conjuring 2. Nah. I'm scared of scary movies too, but I don't know. I just like to see them. I'm gonna switch arms. This hurt. And I get scared like in a bad way. Like I don't want to walk around by myself. <laughs> like wake me up in the middle of the night to walk downstairs to the kitchen or in the bathroom with her to escort her. Everybody's he telling all my business. He talking about me snitching. No, I don't. I've been delivered from that. But I have not gone to the movies to see a horror movie in years. But I want to see The Conjuring too. Ooh, ooh. It was a, it was like a toss up between that and what was the other one? The Shallows. Yeah. Was it The Shallows? Mm -hmm. So. Shark movie with the girl. I don't know. When we get into them spooky spirits, that stuff kind of mess with me a little bit. But I want to see The Conjuring too. Y'all pray for me. I'll tell you how it is when I come out. She looks like the cutest little munchkin. <laughs> Gotta love her. It was pretty gruesome at some points. A lot of blood, but really good. What, you forgot something? Put the um, phone down here, but I can't feel it. Oh. You got it? Yes. It was well acted. Very suspenseful. 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 <laughs> Somebody's sleepy. It's a sleepy. So simple. I haven't been able to talk all day. But you know what? Sleep you now. I want some uh, non dairy ice cream. I'm just going to make it at night. So it's like midnight. Yeah, I'm gonna have some ice cream. Good movie though, what'd you think? Excellent movie, it was really intense. It's crazy, I know I wouldn't be out there. No sharks, mm -hmm. I mean not that she, that was just a rough movie. Don't be fooling around with nature. That ain't where we supposed to be at. We ain't supposed to be in the water. If we was, we'd have fins. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I am sleepy, although I'm about to have some ice cream and then I'm gonna go to sleep. Don't judge me. We is dog tired. <laughs> hey guys. How you doing today? It's so good to see you again. We're so happy that you guys decided to hang out with us yep. again. We appreciate it. We're fully recovered from last <laughs> night now. We're pretty tired. Oh man, I'm still tired. That was too late. Yes. I'm too old for that, babe. Yes, you are. That late movie started at 10.15 and then I tried to eat some ice cream. I don't know what I ate yesterday, but last night, what time was it when I showed you? Uh, about 1.30. I had a cluster of bumps all upside the left, just the left side of my head coming all the way down. Then the, it was mm -hmm. horrible. Yeah, it wasn't pretty sight. I mean, you're still beautiful, but... It was gross. Yeah, you don't have to fix it up. It was nasty. A little bit of an outbreak. It was horrible. Don't know exactly what caused it, but you know. I don't know if it was the, the Chipotle. That was good. I've had the um that uh ice cream. Yeah, the, the vegan ice cream. I've had that before. It could have been the um well, the Oreos though. So. Could have been that. I was really acting up last night. I hadn't had Oreos in a long time. And Oreos are vegan. Yeah, they are. But they still got a bunch of products and chemicals in them that you probably don't typically have. Yeah. I be trying to eat clean. and That's the annoying thing. Like, if I start to eat clean and then I eat junk, sometimes I have reactions. So. But she made it through. And we are happy to say that... What? Can't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> make me sleepy. Can you tell? Anyway, thanks for hanging out with us. Yes. Appreciate you being along with us for the journey. Yeah, indeed. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And go ahead and click on that subscribe link down below. Mm -hmm. Tell a friend about us. Yeah, please do. We appreciate our new subscribers. We love all your comments. Really, really cool. You have encouraged Kenya and his velvety voice. <laughs> Whatever. You're a hater. They love you, babe. They be pulling for you. Thank I, you, guys. I'm I appreciate pulling for you, it. too, honey. Whatever. <laughs> But yeah, Kenya is funny. He recovered that night from his scare about the lightning. So everything went well. Yep. So until next time. Yeah. Take care. See ya.